Outsiders. It's your host, Bad Obsessive Chris, here with a little personal announcement. I've been on a bit of journey of discovery myself, and no, I'm not becoming a vigilante. In fact, I'm here to tell you that I now identify as gender queer, and my pronouns are she, they. It has been an amazing journey, and I've felt so much love and support poured out by all of you on Twitter when I made the announcement. I wanted to make sure that those who weren't on Twitter heard my story about what's going on too. This podcast has been a place where we've explored a lot of themes about gender and identity and, you know, in many ways has helped me kind of explore my own ideas about my own gender and identity. And I just really wanted to say thank you and to bring you along on this journey with me. Hello and welcome to the Gotham Outsiders, our Batman book club. Roundhouse kicking the Ninja Turtles in the face. I'm your host, Bat Obsessive Chris, and skateboarding down the stairs of Wayne Manor, my co-host TJ. Oh gosh, Alfred has me by the ear. Hi everyone, (laughs) I'm your Chris proclaimed Batman acolyte. Well, we searched through the multi-dimensions to find aid in our time of need, but it turned out all we had to do was go across the pond. And we found writer of books, comics, and TV, Sarwat Chada. Hello, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to Wayne Manor. It has been <laughs> such a such a uh, hope of mine that I would get an invite to go through those dark, grim gates and along <laughs> the driveway haunted by bats. And I've noticed, you know, that there is this interesting access behind this grandfather clock should i have mentioned this already or should we say that for later <laughs> I, uh, we don't talk about that no no uh, we don't talk about that right, did you have uh, trouble finding the place <laughs> you got here good did ace the bat hound like bite at you at all <laughs> um yeah i'm not exactly that great with dogs so there was a few laps around wayne manor that i had to <laughs> to run banging at the door each time I came and of course Alfred you know Alfred is a fellow countryman so we had a we had a lovely cup of Earl Grey to calm my nerves I'm so glad he was there to help you out well Sarwat we are so excited you're here can you guys tell me a little bit about how you met yeah so we are we're Twitter friends can we call each other friends Sarwat? I certainly can. <laughs> oh excellent we are Twitter friends because I was lucky enough to be an advanced reader of Sarwat's new uh, book that's in the Rick Riordan Presents title um, which is City of the Plague Gods and I love it and I could talk about it for several hours if anyone wants to just find me on Twitter it is one of the best books I've read in ages. That's so kind of you, Chris. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Everybody needs to go out there and get it immediately. Uh, But I reviewed it and then probably squealed about it quite a bit on Twitter. And I think that's how we started interacting. So another Twitter meet cute is what you're telling me. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, we're all in perfect social isolation right now. So Twitter is a little bit of a lifeline to the outside world. Yes. And so I just saw you have a short story in a Star Wars anthology. Oh, yes. My other great passion besides, you know, the di- Batman, the Dark Knight and of course the big blue boy scout. I was I was part of the original, you know, fans. I saw Star Wars back in 1978. So, yes, I am that old. <laughs> we love it. Uh, on this podcast, we have a totally not serious rivalry with a fellow Star Wars podcast. So, oh yeah, pink, pink milk, pink it's milk. Right. We're we're still coming for you, pink milk. Yeah, we're coming it's, um, for you. Two queer husbands talking about Star Wars. It's a very relaxing, cute show. And yes, the night. Uh, youtube live show they do it's really cool yeah we started beef with them just because we figured the dc fandom and the star wars fandom are two of the most polarizing fandoms so it'd be just fun to have beef with them uh but they're lovely actually shockingly you are not our first star wars author to be on our show who would have thought 
I know that there are a few Star Wars fans out there. I mean, so strange for such an obscure sci-fi movie from the 70s. <laughs> yeah, who's ever heard of, can you say it again, Star Wars, was it? Words? Yeah, not Star Trek, although, you know, I am a big fan of like the original Kirk and Spark and crew. Oh, good. So it's Stargate is what you're saying. You're the Stargate <laughs> that you write for? <laughs> Star something. I, I, I have got my notes on me now. All right. <laughs> so on that note, um, we do a little game here on the show uh, where we do Batman related trivia. And you should know we made history last episode as TJ won for the very first time. Yay. <sighs> I feel I feel the pressure. I feel the I'm swaying yes. here in my in my bat cape. <laughs> how's He's your a- uh, how's your Batman knowledge? Are you well, a big Batman it, nerd? It all depends on eras because oh my gosh. So I started collecting Batman and D um detective comics seriously in like 1980, 81. And so that was like the tail end of the Neil Adams era and um oh god I'm just trying to remember the writers that were involved so I think Denny O'Neill was still involved Mm. and so um but then I went through to probably about the early 90s and then I moved abroad and tracking down monthly comics was next to impossible Mm. and so I'll be honest since oh yeah and I've got um the first printing of the Dark Knight Returns signed by Frank Miller himself. Oh, wow. Oh, that's got to be worth a pretty 1986, penny. 1986, when he came over to London, and there's a really famous comic shop called Forbidden Planet. And yeah, yeah so, uh, but then sort of from the mid 90s onwards, I picked it up DC. Well, I, picked, I kind of stopped collecting comics, and actually, Rebirth has been my rebirth. And wow, it's been utterly, utterly amazing. And of course, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a bit more detail soon. Super Sons has been really the the jewel in the crown of that resurgence. I I, I agree. What what polar opposites from where you started, though, if you were doing Frank Miller and Denny O'Neill and now you're reading Super Sons, like the tone (laughs) difference. (laughs) Yeah, but the thing is, I think it's also uh, an age thing because... You know, I've gone from being, you know, the angry, broody teen who the <laughs> Dark Knight and all of that was aimed at, to being like a dad of teenagers. Aww. And so for me, Super Sons actually is probably more relevant now. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's all right, wonderful. Chris. Well, avoid questions from all of those eras he just mentioned. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going to. So. <laughs> So my first question, we ask a lot of uh, Bat Family related questions on here, but this book has a different family featured in it as well. Right. Oh, uh, and in which case, can I also drop another classic collection? Please. I've got the first printing of The Death of the Family as well. Oh, wow. That's the advantage of age and just basically being a collector. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I love, oh, I love that one. It breaks my heart. I'm going to cry just thinking about it. We're fine. (laughs) So my question for the two of you, and you can kind of go backward and forward to see who can get the most answers. How many members of the super family can you name? Okay. So obviously um, (laughs) Carl-El. Right. Okay. Jor-El, Carl-El, Kara, um, Jonathan Kent, Connor Kent, uh, Crypto, uh, Speedy, right. Uh, there's a monkey <laughs> there is a monkey <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna say super chimp all right i'm just gonna guess at super chimp that's, uh, that's a fair guess i feel like <laughs> and wonder horse i know that there was a horse <laughs> too i'm just like i've got it in my mind um and uh, so did i say um Zor-El? um <sighs> well i can tell you you've already got me beat Right. I'm just like I'm just, there, there, looking, TJ. just wondering if there are other <sighs> Lara. Oh, there you which go. Was, um Carlos' mum. And that as far the thing is I haven't watched Krypton, otherwise I'd probably go to the grandparents. Uh, <laughs> TJ is over here just like asleep now because he's like <laughs> 
TJ, did, is there any that you could think of that weren't mentioned? Uh, no. The, <laughs> I probably would have been the ones that have been featured on the CW shows is That's the extent of my knowledge. Uh, shockingly, no one mentioned Lois Lane. <laughs> oh, no, I did. Oh, I my had gosh. Her in my head. Yeah, Mama Kent. Yes. <laughs> oh, in which case, Jonathan Kent, the dad, and Martha Kent, the, the mom, you know. Martha. Martha. Yeah, Martha. <laughs> Uh, does Lex Luthor count? Because I know he's <laughs> sure. the dad of uh, Thomas. Because, because he's Cotter Kent's clone dad. <laughs> we should also note that there are multiple Cotter Kent's, so you could have said his name more than once and counted. Oh. oh my gosh, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so there's Connor with a K and there's Cotter with a C. There are, there are two Cotter Kent's, uh, at least. And then there's also the evil super son, jo- the first John. Really? Uh, yeah, but he's not in every. I don't even know if he's still in continuity. To be honest with you, someone right. someone out there will tell me. <laughs> Is he you still know, in continuity? <laughs> not sure. What was weird was when they ha- kept the original multiverses. It was much easier to keep track of everybody. And actually, yeah. uh, part of me feels that when they did Crisis and think, right, we're just all going to put everyone together, it only made things bizarrely more complicated. <laughs> I feel well, that it's quite too. easy to say, right, that's Earth S, that's Earth 1, that's Earth 2, the year, year, right? Everyone's in their nice little box. That's all fine. Yeah. I can understand it. All right, TJ and uh, Sarwat, what is the deal with Amazo? Right, so Amazo is a cyborg or robot who's able to, who has collectively all the powers of the Justice League. And for some reason, I remember that he used to have a gem in his forehead and he was half purple. And, of course, um, his powers become a significant factor in Volume 1 of Super Sons. Yes. TJ, anything? Uh, I actually have it in my notes <gasps> to ask you what the oh. hell <laughs> the Amazo virus was because I had no idea. Okay, well, the 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 Marvel answer, so TJ is much more of a Marvel person. Think Ultron with rogue powers, and you've kind of got a Mezo. Okay, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> uh, how you doing over there, TJ? You okay? <laughs> uh, well, right now, I've I've almost been demolished by Sarawat, but I'm hanging on by a thread. <laughs> well, luckily for you, uh, though, not luckily, because you have no chance at this point. But anyway, luckily for you, our final question is a creative challenge. Oh, let's hope so- I'm creative. <laughs> Go for it. So in Super Sons, two major DC characters get sort of a chance to be parents and that's the focus of the story and so my question is if you could pick two other characters from dc canon and give them a parent sort of slice of life more grounded story which two characters would you pick right okay the next obvious one would for me be green arrow and black canary I would think that would be interesting because you kind of feel that they're probably next in line sort of, you know, to be at least semi-settling down and then, you know, a kid on the way. And so I would go with, yeah, I would go with Green Arrow and Black Canary. Interesting. That's a really good answer. Yeah. I feel like we almost had that CW show. <laughs> uh, we, right. Almost. That was what was kind of going to happen. Or yeah. kind of did a little bit happen. So yeah, it was see, Felicity. Uh, not I yeah. got up Man. to season three of Arrow, which I really loved. But then they started having all the crossovers. Yeah. And I couldn't keep track yeah. of them. That is so, very fair. Uh, my answer, you know, I feel like I'm pretty limited to like Bat Family because that's the only characters I'm really educated about and personally care about. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to say, play to your interests a little bit, Chris, to try to get this last point. Um, Jason Todd and Roy Harper, like they adopt (gasps) a little street kid and try to raise him. Okay, I just gasped. That's a beautiful answer. That would be cool. That would be cool. I would die of happiness. But that has dysfunctional written all over it. I mean, right. I mean, so to be fair, so does Oliver Queen and uh, and uh, Black Canary as parents. Uh, although now saying <laughs> that, could you just imagine after one drunken night, Constantine and Zantana ending up with something? Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, all the baby's words would be backwards. They'd be very confused. <laughs> That's. 
<laughs> that I think all right somebody has to make that happen magical baby I love it <laughs> all right I, I can't choose so you both get a point for that one because yay. Yay. yay so despite TJ uh, getting a tide point at the end you were soundly defeated coming off of your win last oh, week how are you feeling oh. <laughs> that's okay I still have that one win under my belt and, and you're, uh, you're gonna hold on to it <laughs> yeah a slew of ties at this point so yeah. <laughs> it's true well how about we get into the meat of super sons yes let's get into super sons volume one when i grow up by peter j tomasi Yay! Yay! <laughs> so i have to ask because i know you're both really big fans of this series yes uh I'm, you reread it this time what number of rereads are you on Okay, so on the original series, I think I'm on two or three, but you know the Adventures of Super Sons? Yes. I've reread the first six so many times, but uh, I've not, uh, even though I've got the entire um, maxi series of 12, and it, it's a weird habit, I've got, it's become this weird habit of mine. When I know a thing is ended, I always resist finishing it because I then do that it remains too. strangely you know it still remains potential in the future and so yeah. now that there's the is it the trials of, or the challenges of the super sons come out i think so yeah yeah so now that i know that there's another series i can now go back and actually finish adventures of super sun because i think that's fine <laughs> there's another one ahead of me this might be my third time i'm actually not sure um i'm not a big i don't reread comics too frequently because there's just so many of them to read um but this is one i would come back to because it's such a comforting read so Absolutely. this was my second time reading it uh chris finally convinced me to read it like five months ago maybe yeah um so after he had it long. for he had my comic for what three years <laughs> it was a long time i still have it you do still have it i do uh but yeah i before i i don't want to say what i think yet okay. i'll hold off a little bit but um, why do you guys love this so much? Because I know you both love it. Well, I think for me, it's like I felt, and this is probably my age and, you know, crick uh, rickety nature. I've actually <laughs> felt that comics have gone too dark. And it's funny yeah. coming from somebody who got the, you know, the original Dark Knight Returns, which, of course, I still hold up as being like the, one of the most iconic series of all time and uh, the original Watchmen. But I think my break away made me actually kind, well, actually want to think, right, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, be quite nice to be pick up comics that are just pure fun yeah and so and out of you know the bat universe especially is dark and gritty and violent and then also you know you're watching the like i you know i i come from a time when there really wasn't you know there was a comic fan base and so you were a comic fan so i used to pick up i've got like oh i've got the original daredevil where Electra dies yeah because <laughs> it was frank miller and it was ninjas and it was all these wonderful things and then i'm watching the daredevil tv series i think oh my god the guy must have brain damage by now <laughs> Yeah, anything other, you know, that really, really, really hurts. Yeah. And yeah. so I was actually, I think I was hankering for just uh, something that was the polar opposite, that was just silly, fun, and just absolutely, absolutely full of energy. And then Super Suns appeared and it was perfect. Yeah, I think I feel similarly. My favorite moments in Batman is always the like soft moments where that's focused on their family that happens sort of just randomly in other people's comics, right? Like there'll be a moment of Alfred and Bruce having a heart to heart or a moment of Dick and Damien talking. And I love those moments. And this book is that, but the whole comic. And it, yeah. it, it's pure yeah. joy. It's like a dopamine hit just to pick it up literally i was rereading it last night and i giggled out loud out of just pure joy 
Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And it was the same. You're just reading the banter between Damien and John, and you were just <laughs> laughing out loud. Yes, I absolutely was out loud. Like my roommate was asleep. I was having to cover my mouth because I was giggling <laughs> out loud. Well, since you two are gushing, I'll start gushing too. <laughs> Yay! I I said this was my second time reading it. The first time around, I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. Um, but this time around. I liked it a lot more and I think maybe that's because uh, since the first time I've read it I've read a lot more of Damien right. and just a lot more in this world so I felt more connected to Damien and just yeah. the interactions between him and John were so funny and heartfelt and like you know their interactions are what carry this book I, I'm not that's super sad. impressed with the plot specifically yeah. like the antagonist but it doesn't matter because it's just there for them to have something to do yeah yeah exactly and i think that was um that to be honest tj that's exactly how i felt to be mm -hmm. it was actually rereading it yesterday i actually realized there was a plot and they actually all <laughs> joined together so oh yeah amazing thing and he's stolen this suit and he's got this badge yeah yeah fair enough all right fine anyway what's the next bit john and damien are going to get into they're not little um adults they are boys yeah. and it's that slightly exaggerated cartoon they're both kind of scrawny big heads big eyes just just suits the whole tone of the store um the writing perfectly yeah i think uh, i think it is jorge jimenez but that could be wrong right or H jimenez. Uh, i'm looking now it, yes it was jorge jimenez and alejandro sanchez were the artists on this book there we go thank you yeah yeah and the style is so warm i i love the art throughout it it's it's happy just like the same way the story is the art is incredibly joyful yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, it was a fun time. So let's just dive in at yeah. the beginning. Should we start with Damien visiting John dressed up as an old man? <laughs> I love this so <laughs> yeah. much. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, I was like, it's, it's so ridiculous, but I'm here for it. Yeah, it's so <laughs> Damien. I loved yeah. it so much. I was, uh, I forgot that this was how this started. So you have this like crankety guy on the bus that's being really weird. And then it turns out it, it is Damien with like booster kind of spring heels <laughs> in his shoes. And <laughs> Well, that's the running joke throughout the whole thing about Damien being older, but John being taller. Yeah. And so so I was thinking, was he wearing platforms to drive the bus? He really was. <laughs> they show it. There's one scene later when he pulls the costume off and it's these like, they're like springy shoes, which oh, is right. very adorable. Yeah, the Fantastic. fact that Damien yeah. is shorter, I, I love that. It's so cute. I know, it yeah. bothers him so much, but he's <laughs> yeah. always like, I'm older, and he holds it over John the whole book. He calls yeah. him a toddler. They're what? They're two <laughs> years apart? He's like, you toddler. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at the page now, and I miss the booster boots. Right? They're great. Yes. fantastic. He I love was it. wearing, right? fantastic and he you. teaches which he teaches geography is that the class that he just takes over yeah and so he was like this <laughs> right i'm i've got the it right in front of me yeah so he's but that's uh that's damien per he's so pompous he so says, i could have got my doctorate in geology at seven years old and you must think <laughs> yeah <laughs> i learned how to drive at five and then yeah, later you right. think I sent uh, my first email at two years old. What's so funny <laughs> is that he thinks everything he says is impressing the person that he's speaking to <laughs> when you know it's having the exact opposite. Uh, did Damien really do these things or do we think, is he exaggerating a little bit? I think he legitimately did all these things, but he's so, because he's so serious, he doesn't know how to. I think, yeah. you know, he says, yeah, you know, I am brilliant. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. This, I can do this, 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 and this. And instead of people thinking, oh, wow, that's really amazing. Oh, my God, what pompous jackass. <laughs> yeah, I think there's enough canon evidence that he did these things. Like, he built, you know, this motorcycle or whatever at these ages. Uh, so I think it is true. But like you're saying, it's both that people don't care. <laughs> And that they also don't believe him, I think, half the time. They're like, okay. Oh, right. You see, I actually think they do believe him, but they're just not impressed. <laughs> and so, 
because it's just so outrageously boastful. So it's true. See, I have really to like true. suspend my belief a little bit because he's like, I was two when I sent an email. And I'm like, maybe <laughs> Yeah. It, it is possible so there, there okay. have been people that that are that smart it's rare but it is possible um and there's also a little bit of uh you know to 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 throw back to a, a marvel comic here there's a little bit of the nadia van dyme going on here where mm. he was raised like an adult like he wasn't treated like a child mm-hmm. uh and so he had to there's there's both intelligence and having to grow up very quickly can I tell you guys the character Damien reminded me of while reading this? Please. Uh, so Sawa, I don't know if you're also familiar with Glee, but- I know of the TV series, <laughs> okay. but it's, yeah, okay. I'm not actually- so general it. knowledge. So Damien has a few lines that he says in this book that made me go, why is he Sue Sylvester <laughs> from Glee? <And> he's like, <laughs> Chris, I knew you would love this. He's like, you think this is hard? Try water, being waterboarded. That's hard. <laughs> like, that's, I don't know. Just something about it. I was like, Damien, why are you Sue Sylvester? He's been teasing me about this thought for days. He's like, I have something hilarious to tell you. And I've been trying to guess who he's been comparing Damien to. Never in my life would I have jumped to Sue it, Sylvester. There's something right. there, I'm telling you. All right, now you make me want to watch Glee. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Watch like, the pilot. Road. Watch the pilot and then stop. Yes. Cool. Watch the pilot and pretend it was a short movie and never look back. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but let's move on from uh, from Glee. <laughs> we don't have time for all that. So Damien is homeschooled by Alfred, which yes. is just hysterical. Poor Alfred. <laughs> Can you imagine teaching <laughs> this child? <laughs> but Alfred has the absolute patience of a saint though doesn't he and he so really and of course you know he's like he's like the granddad um <laughs> and what you what are you really get is the and of course this is all history isn't it do you mm-hmm. realize absolutely and I, i'm just trying to think there was maybe his court of owls but there was a batman book where all the Robins are attending some sort of party. It is and, Court of Owls. We just read that one. <laughs> oh, right. And so there's um, a little blurb against each of them yeah. about what level of authorization that they have. And yes. what's great is, um, I can't remember exactly, but they've all got high or very high or whatever, but Alfred has unlimited and so yes. you really get that, you know, yes, Aww. you know, he is the granddaddy, as it were. He is. I love that my favorite moment of the two of them in this is when Damien is running down the stairs and he uses Alfred's head as a pivot point to do a flip. <laughs> and Alfred is like, you are not welcome. Do we think yeah, his lesson Alfred or doesn't like... flinch. He just, you just... know... <laughs> He's like, I've been through so much worse than yeah, you, child. Exactly. Yeah. We think exactly. his lesson plans for Damien are like Batman specific because Damien knows everything. I feel like his lesson plans for Damien are like, here's how to socialize. Right. <laughs> like, Word problems like, if you have two Jokers and. <laughs> Three Harley Quinns. I'm telling you, I think that Alfred sits him down and is like, in polite society, you say thank you, you say please. (laughs) Those are the lessons. I'd buy that, yeah. And so I have a question for both of you. Uh, Since reading some more Batman, uh, I have an opinion on this. (laughs) Damien mentions Talia. And I recall Chris saying on this podcast that she thinks Talia is a good mother. Yeah. I disagree. After reading some stuff with her, I'm like, "Mm." Okay, so (laughs) I'll I'll just jump in here and then I'll let you, Sarah, because I'm sure you have an opinion also. Talia has been done dirty by various rebirth and such. She used to be a good mother and they've, depending on the writer, they have added elements of evil to her, but her original iteration, she was not actually a villain. Okay. And then right. since then, there have been times where she has been a good mother. And then there are, there are some writers that bring to her this, like, no, she's this evil temptress and she's, like, awful. But that isn't always her character. And recently, the most recent Talia storyline, you see her being a good mother again. So it depends. Right. So basically, uh, that's quite a 
interesting point because what I find tricky mm. is that there are those sort of certain tropes that yeah. I think perhaps female characters fall into. And yeah. with Talia, if we're going back to the original, you know, uh, her original appearance, which was Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill. Yeah, she was, you know, she's basically the exotic Asian temptress, which is one of the yeah. worst cliches in the world. Yes. Um, but with my, you know, I, I'm of a, right, my background is... Uh, Muslim and I'm really really fascinated by crusade and Arab history so for me the whole Arabian you know the assassins connection was just thing oh my god this is bloody fantastic yeah <laughs> and what really appeals to me and it keeps uh, it's funny because it keeps on crossing my mind is the fact that Damien's half Arabic yeah. and you know um, so what I I suppose you've answered it, to be honest, Chris. It really depends on the writer. And so her character isn't being... Res I suppose what we're coming down to is her character's not being respected enough for them to say, right, this is the definitive version. This is what we're sticking to. And I don't like the idea that powerful women have to basically be hard nose and emotionless and basically yeah. cruel because we don't give that tribute to men so you can be powerful and incredibly loving and incredibly yeah. nurturing and you know he is the heir of the league of assassins and of course she'd want to bring him with that heritage in mind and yeah. so i think yeah i I would, oh my gosh, you know, I've written comics for years and I've really, because I think I've got two girls, I've written loads of uh, female protagonists and my gosh, having an opportunity to go at someone like Talia would be just, yeah. basically Talia and Damon, you know, Damien, sorry, you, that, that would be a brilliant mini series, don't oh, you think? I would, I would read that in a heartbeat, please write it somehow. <laughs> Those are really good points. Uh, so what... What in encouraged this question for me is I've read Batman and Son, which was by Grant Morrison and the mm -hmm. introduction of Damien not that long ago. And while I was reading it, Talia is basically presented as like this mustache twirling villain. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just kept thinking about Chris saying, oh, she's such a great mother, actually. And I was like, <laughs> is she, though? Is she, though? Yeah. So the, one of the things that they've done... Um, lately which is infuriating to me personally is that they've made her more evil and they've added this element to her storyline about Damien's birth and Sarwat I'm curious what you okay. think about this because they've added this like it, it's they've made it rapey that she like did she either drugged Batman or she took some of his no. DNA they have they really have and I hate it so uh, right. much because again I've got the you know sorry I'm so book Please. dropping I've got the original hardback of the son of the demon yeah? yeah and when he and when Bruce and Tanya actually get together it's quite clear they're yeah. in a loving relationship yeah right? And there's I, a whole thing that doesn't he give Talia his mother's diamonds? Yeah, and I, I think, think so, yeah. Yeah, and then, but then it ends with her having given Damien away. So clearly they retconned that, which yeah. is like, fair yeah. enough. But uh, no, yeah. and you've, from the whole history of um, Talia, or at least the history that I remember, yeah. Bruce, yeah, he's got a serious soft spot for Talia. And, you know, Ra's al Ghul is just really Bruce through the mirror cracked, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Which is constantly why Ra's thinks that Bruce would be the perfect replacement for him if he could just rid himself of that pesky morality. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it just comes down to recent comics have done Talia dirty and yeah. she deserves better. I just right, saw well, a tweet about the the consent thing between her and Bruce like yesterday and someone had evidence of like no it was a loving relationship yeah and if you go back it, like this is a very I'd have to I don't remember what writer did this uh but this was a very recent thing I think it is what is current continuity but they've also kind of gone like back on it a bit it's so, like I said the last comic to have Talia and Damien in it is really sweet and wonderful it's just rare to see that anymore and I think mm. that's really problematic 
problematic. I think that's just, yeah, I think Sarwat was saying it's, you know, kind of sexist. I think it's also kind of racist the way they've treated her. Yeah, yeah. And it's something that you know that there's no need to go down the path that they've gone because part of it is actually, I think, slightly boring because you're yeah. not really testing your you know you're not testing your boundaries as a writer because you think right how can i present this without just ticking the the first five cliches that jump into my head yeah i love that you pointed out that damien is um have arabian because there's a big push right now for him to be portrayed more in that light in the comics like people really want his skin to be a little bit darker to express yeah. that yeah, and this yeah. is coming partly out of, uh, Sarwat, maybe you can remind me which book it was. There was a book that the cover of it completely whitewashed him. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't know off the top of my head. Um, well, I feel I'll like there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I that's fair. Remember... But there was specifically one that was like really, right, really because bad. I remember in, you know, the various wedding mini issues leading mm -hmm. up to Bruce marrying, or oh, not marrying Selena. No spoilers. You should have read it by now. <laughs> what? Here we go. Everyone what? Surprise. On. Surprise. Uh, but um, Damien is getting uh, measured up for an Arabic outfit because yes. that's what he'd wear at the wedding. And so I thought that was Aww. a really nice, not, you know, not making a big deal of it, but that was really yeah. spot on. And so um, it's, yeah, in a way, all of this, is an opportunity to write more freshly and explore new boundaries rather than thinking, yeah, right, you know, this is a bit inconvenient. We don't know how to handle it. We'll just ignore it and just, you know, pretend yeah. that he's another European hero when he's so clearly not and has so much more to, to offer the Bat family, well, to offer, you know, the DC world. Absolutely. And, and we need more characters that are, you know, diverse. Um, this The one I was specifically referring to was Super Sons, the Polar Shield Project, which was, I think, a novel. Okay. Uh, and it, oh, do you remember right. this one? He is like a uh, light haired, very pale on it. It was a really big deal when it came out because people were like, who is this? This is not who is this person? Um, there right. was also some. Oh, was that like the younger graphic novels that they did a couple of yeah. uh, a little while back? It was. Yeah. Right. I did. I must admit, I didn't get those. Uh, fair. Uh, I, I I didn't read it either. After all of that, and then there was also a period of time where they were trying to change his name to sound more. Uh, I guess I don't know. They changed it to Ian. Were you aware of this for a little no. while? No. Isn't that awful? <laughs> oh my gosh what? They, that's they so have, weird they yeah they're th that they changed it right back because everyone in the entire fandom was like stop it stop stop it wow right um the mind boggles it it does <laughs> all right well we've spent a decent amount of time unpacking damien now it's time for you guys to explain jonathan kent to me i love him i love him i love him <laughs> he's the sweetest bean yeah, I, this is the only thing I've read with him. That's a lie. I, I read a little bit of Deceased with him and Damien, which was very cute, their scenes yeah. there. Uh, yeah. But beyond that, I don't know anything about him. Like, where did he come from? Right, so I, so the whole, you know, so I got back on board with Rebirth and I basically bought pretty much everything for the first, you know, couple of months and then started filtering yeah. down because it was just getting really ridiculous. And so... Tomasi was writing Superman and so yes. all the groundwork for Super Sons was being put in place in the first couple of issues and what was and I think you see it's weird because I want to write if I was like a you know if I was like an angry young teen how would I feel about Superman but then I suddenly realized Superman always felt like a dad even <laughs> when I was like you know because he is isn't he because he's such a dad yeah and in the best way possible he doesn't need to be cool but he's absolutely there for you and there's this one amazing uh i think it might be in action comics 1000 but i'm i really feel bad about mutilating his name but your gay has done this brilliant full page picture of superman just sitting on a cloud hand on his chin uh and just Aww. smiling down at us and you're thinking yeah that's really, that should be in a church. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. 
this, this I, is this is the so in Peter Tomasi's run with Rebirth, yep. what sort of happens in the first volume of Superman, which is one of my favorites. That that first volume that he wrote um, is that this is a Superman that is a different one than the one the Justice League knew. Yeah, so he's not the new. 52 superman yeah he's a different he's the, multiverse character that has ended up in this you this multiverse so uh, he has to sort of rebuild everything he has to rebuild his friendship with batman and get gain everyone's trust again but he's different too because he's like a little older a little more mature he has this family he has you know jonathan kent mm -hmm. and you know it's this is what i was telling you about tj when i said my favorite version of superman is the one where they bring in this kind of like Da dad superman basically right so the superman in this book is not the superman that was previously established right well he was the previous previously established superman <laughs> so <laughs> i think this is the superman that was the one that was in the death of superman which is what early 90s now early yeah. mid 90s so he's that continuity but then i stopped reading it yeah. and then there was new 52 and then i completely lost track and then when i knew rebirth was happening i think i picked up the last few of the new 52s where they basically killed off the new 52 superman and was yeah. sort of subtly introducing the old superman so this is the superman that was the one that was left after Crisis in Infinite Earths in the mid '80s. That's how I perceive oh, him. Yeah. That's that's that makes sense to me as well. It, it's definitely a very fun story, TJ. If you ever pick it up, the the rebirth, the first rebirth, because it is a lot of Superman meeting different members of the Justice League, and like Batman is very sensitive about the fact that his Superman is dead, and he's like, "You're not my Clark." you know like so so does superman and john like do they think they're from another universe or do they like think this is their universe they know yeah so they're okay. kind of adjusting to this world we, we're jumping in at super sons they've already pretty well adjusted but yeah they know gotcha. where they're from huh well i would have never known that reading this <laughs> well, i think that's i mean this is just it i've been through so many reboots and retcons that sometimes i think all right this isn't really working out for me fine i'll just pause for five years because there'll be another <laughs> reboot yeah I and maybe it'll end up being a bit more you know what i fancy or not but there is there is um that i actually find the reboots i actually quite enjoy them me because too. it gives everyone an opportunity to explore different flavors and at the end of the day you know we're here just for it's the pure imagination and the joy of it rather than thinking well that doesn't make exact the guy can shoot laser beams <laughs> out of his eyes you know that's how it all started let's not get too tied down <laughs> or to it and um which is going back to my earlier comment the fact that they in before crisis where they all inhabited different multiverses that yeah. worked perfectly fine for me because for me those were always big adventures when for example shazam was in a completely different universe to superman and then there'd be the occasional team-ups and they were brilliant yeah yeah I, I think that makes sense one of my favorite things about uh dc fandom is that we all collectively decide to pick and choose which parts we decide we're keeping in our minds whether the dc editorial gets a say in it or not <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite character is uh tim drake and at collectively the fandom's just like uh we're gonna ignore the fact that right now in his storyline he's not ever been robin we're just gonna ignore that we think it's stupid we're just gonna keep the old continuity <laughs> hold on what he's not <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we've had this since multiple, when we have broken the brains of multiple guests with this fact but since oh. rebirth uh robin or he has only ever been red robin and was never robin which makes no sense at all so we okay. pretend it didn't happen right right although it is because i actually feel that what DC should do, all right, so this is me giving them a voice. Ooh, okay, is do it. That they should just embrace the, you know, they, sh they shouldn't really worry about uh, timelines or anything like that. Because what I think would be really fun is if they said, right, we're just going to go back to pre-Bat Family Batman 
and just say, right, these are just past stories and then just explore those quite wholeheartedly. Because one of, you know, the lone Avenger of the night, you can't go wandering down a street in Gotham without tripping over another member of the Bat family. And so, <laughs> so, so on the one hand, I can feel, yeah, Bruce, you are really super duper overcompensating. Uh, <laughs> I, I just read a short but, story where they all show up at the same crime scene and it's like whoop there's... yeah that was <laughs> detective comics i yes. think uh 1027 so yeah, funny very cute i i'm a bat family lover so i i would be sad but i i'm also on board with them just ignoring the timeline they already do it because how many right. times have they changed the age differences between the members of the bat family it's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I really, really adore uh, Dick Grayson and Nightwing and all of his his history. Yeah. Because that's because it's also the way that he's as far as I know from the comics I've read, I've loved the way that they've evolved him. And yeah. that time with Spiral as well. I just thought that was really, really oh, nicely done. Yes. And it's that, you know, he went from being a son to basically being the younger brother and actually a, de a really good sounding board for yeah. Bruce. And, you know, he played such a central part in the Court of Owls saga, which I thought was great. Yes, I love the Court of Owls. Oh, yes. Well, let's transition into the antagonists here, which are uh, the kid Amazo and possibly lex luther i am gonna need that explained to me <laughs> yeah i was gonna say lex isn't really an antagonist in this one he's i know i still don't quite get the super suit thing so this is this is such a comics thing though right because i was as soon as i was reading this again i was remembering all the other characters who've done this because uh, you know there's a there's a run in spider-man where dr octopus just decides to become spider-man for a while they like this is just oh, a wow. thing there's a thing that happens where the super villain's like haha what if i'm you okay <laughs> so this is lex like during his i'm totally a good guy wink you know phase um and he kind of did some good things during this period certainly in this one he's pretty much good mm. uh this is also kind of like that time dr doom was good or magneto was good like this just happens the villains every right. once in a while take a break from being evil right well i suppose if you do nothing some of them by default are going to be beneficial <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, you know, maybe if you've just been twirling your mustache for years, it's, you know, what a little vacation from that. Yeah, because the thing is, I've been collecting on and off uh, just sleek, and he's clearly back into total villain mode now. <laughs> yeah. I think this was short lived. I also I can't remember because I'm not I'm not as up on my Superman as I am on my Batman knowledge. But I think this was a very short lived time. And I believe that he was up to something. So he wasn't right. totally being good. But in this right. one, he pretty much is because I forgot that uh, when I was reading it and he shows up and I was got kind of scared for a minute. I was like, oh, no. And I was like, oh, right. He's good at the moment. It's fine. I feel like my first time reading it, it, it pulled me out of the story because I was like, what the hell's going on? But this Fair. time around, I was like, you know what? I don't, I've read so much stuff at this point that I'm <laughs> feeling like that, I think. Yeah. Right. You see, him in the Superman suit was already an ongoing thing within the action comics line. Yeah. And so I already knew about that. It, and I, it was, again, me just thinking, well... Maybe it's something left over from New 52 I don't understand. I'm just going to accept it and just go with it. Yeah. yeah. And what right. was great was when Superman first confront. Right. So when this version of Superman basically puts on the, you know, takes on the colors again and reestablishes himself as the world Superman, he's really antagonistic towards Lex Luthor. And I mm. found that quite an interesting dynamic because yeah. he's so convinced straight away that Lex is up to no good. And I thought that was quite an interesting approach for Superman to have because it wasn't necessarily this, his Lex Luthor. Yeah. Um, but then it all sort of, you know, ended up being the way that it went. But yeah. I mean, it's what I really, sorry, I mean, it's, we didn't really chat about Jonathan as much as I'd want to, but I adore him so much. Oh, please do. Uh, please do. Yeah. Yeah, so please. What I really you know and it, it's funny because it's this comparison and i think that's what makes super sun so brilliant yeah. that you've got 
Bruce trying to raise basically a guy who's born to be an assassin. Yeah. yeah. And Superman raising a kid who basically is born to be a farmer. Because yeah. you know, there's that whole running oh. thing about, right, you know, oh, right, in that volume, uh, John is undone because Lois yeah. comes out and says, you've got to be up early to feed the animals. Yeah, yeah. 4 a.m. And, and I don't know if it's in, I think it's in <laughs> Superman rather than Super Sons. I think the fire, the shed gets struck by lightning or whatever. Yeah, and it's in Superman. Yeah, and there's, you know, Clark, you know, carrying the cows under one arm each from the yeah. burning building. So yeah, my dad Superman thing. We all want out, uh, and I wonder whether for a lot of us kids, there is a point where our parents are superheroes because we expect them to yeah. always have the answer. And then we, you know, we get to that certain age and realize, right, they don't have the answer that I like. And so yeah. I'm going to get angry and resentful. And then you realize, wow, they're really just making up as they go along. Wow. Like Sorry, what? You just personally world. attacked me as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do love, I, I think they do such an amazing balance with John where he is such a good kid. He's just, he's just a good, like pure little being, but without being boring, which yeah. I think it, that's really hard, right? Like it's hard to make a kid that's that rule following interesting but he is because you see how him like struggle with it and he's trying always to do the right thing but it's not easy for him and i think that's what makes it interesting i think there's a real sincerity to all the writing that really comes through so you actually feel that this dame damien this Jonathan are the definitive versions of yes. these characters and there's none of that slightly winking to the audience or um, anticipating other things They're right this is that character and I'm just going to write the the best version that I'm going to write my best yeah of him in this version and it really really everything feels really authentic everything feels yeah. really sincere and the bickering plays a big part of that yes. and, because that's what it would be like yeah yes. and it's not like they they sort of you know there's not they're constantly at it and constantly pushing one another's boundaries yeah and i think that really really takes the whole super sons to uh, it makes it just in a way like i said earlier the plots are incidental it's just yeah. just there for the banter and in a way it's like it's for, right you know buffy really do you remember any great story arcs but yes. it's all right it's all, <laughs> TJ, TJ i does, don't most I, do. right, right i just remember the dynamic between all the characters and the little yeah. pithy throwaway lines and the way that you know i just thought that's it was, you know, at the end of the day, it was a TV series. It didn't have a chance to go for the big, you know, special effects and everything. It was, right. There was a large section. It was just another monster of the week. But what took yeah. it to another level was just the the character play. It felt so authentic. Nobody's being put in there just mm -hmm. to sort of, you know, pad out, you know, Buffy. Yeah. It, they all really felt that they had vivid their own lives. And it's the same with Super Sons. Everyone just feels utterly authentic. Yeah. Lois seems great. You know, Lois is, you know, really perfectly written. Oh, Even though her. she's like this metropolitan career woman, you can really see, you know, how she feels. And actually, there's this one, oh, right, there's this one scene which is towards the back of episode of issue one mm -hmm. where it's Lois has just won the card game she's holding up triple yes a, and then you look at the panel where you know Clark plants one on her lips puts what you know kisses um Jonathan on the forehead and he's out and you're thinking wow that's just so bloody fantastic is that, that I had the same note I love uh Lois and Clark here especially their family dynamics it's just it makes me so happy yeah yeah yeah, I, so, I agree then, with you everything know, you're saying. You've got half an hour, uh, you know, and then it's bedtime for Jonathan. Yeah. I just thought that just, yeah, that's what I mean about sincerity. Everything just yeah. seems authentic and seems real. 
Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to be extremely on brand for our show while we're talking about John here. I, there was something I noticed reading through this time that I wanted to mention and get your two takes on it. So there's the, the storyline with John kind of subtly in, in, in a very non angsty way, because that's this kind of book, is that he's hiding his powers. He's trying to hold back. He's trying a little bit to be something he isn't because it keeps him safer and it keeps other people you know, it, it, keep, it keeps things going smoothly, basically. Like he's trying to maintain this level of normal. And over the course of it, it ends with uh, Clark kind of realizing, and, and Lois realizing that they've held him back by doing this. And there's this kind of beautiful moment of, you know what, we're going to try to let you be yourself um, and explore that, you know, no longer worrying so much about keeping you safe because we're keeping you safe at the extent of hiding who you are. Mm -hmm. So as I was reading through that, I was like imagining being a young kid, like a young queer kid reading this. And I was thinking how that story would have connected to me. Um, and I, think I knew that's where you were going with this. But right. It's true, right? It's yeah. there. Oh Absolutely. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's the parents having trust in you. Yeah. yeah. And then, but then it becomes reciprocated because if they are cutting you slack, you likewise cut them slack. And he's yeah. back by he's back by 9.59, yeah, and I yes. just, that worked absolutely brilliantly, because they yeah. know they've raised a good kid, because when they go, you know, when him and Damien are on patrol, he's saving cats out of trees, because that's yeah. what Jonathan Kent would do, that's what the son of Superman would do, yeah. and so I just thought that was like, it's this lightness of touch, that the whole yes. series has and you you know you can interpret it in so many brilliant ways yeah. i think that's where the you know tomasi's writing of the kent family just absolutely shines you know so so brightly because yeah. as i said superman's always felt like the, a dad but he's felt like the the dad that always understands. Yes, yeah. he's per and, like this you know, beautifully accepting father and i love exactly. it exactly so yeah and so it's that thing about and it's something that I've often got, I think, quite angry about, you know, so Superman's boring because he's got all these exceptional, you know, because he can do anything. Yeah. And you're thinking, yeah, imagine how difficult life is when you are the most powerful human yeah. being in the universe and everything you, every decision you make could have global consequences. How on earth do you stay on the, the straight and narrow? And yeah. I think that in the way is the biggest accomplishment because we've seen what, power does to people and so you know for that reason alone i think right superman is always going to be my absolute favorite hero because the biggest challenge is to be good and it's something that we all and i think in a way that was the thing that slightly started putting me off reading batman because mm -hmm. i felt that they had embraced the batman in the dark knight is not a hero he's been right. put into a position where the world is brutal and he can only respond through equal brutality. And yeah. there are questions over how, and again, I think because I was an angsty teen going through my anti-authoritarian age, <laughs> I felt that, oh, right, you know, it's quite right that um, Superman would just be like a political stooge to the, um, to the president. But now looking back at it, I think, no, no, that's... Yeah you know it was a brilliant brilliant story and not taking anything away from it but yeah. you know there's so much 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 more than superman who can you know to yeah. loot the buildings of a single bound and this is what tomasi gets you know and we'll get yeah. to, he's you know, the person you'd want backing you up and he's the person that you always feel would always 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 be looking out for you and you think that's what a real hero is yeah, yeah. The other stuff feels it ends up becoming really peripheral because you know in the whole super sons thing clark's in the background he doesn't come in and save the day once from what yeah. i can remember but he's there to you know he's there to give jonathan that secure yeah. foundation from which to grow up from and i think that's what we all want from our parents a hundred percent so i gotta ask tj uh as somebody who has famously on this show said that superman is boring how do you respond <laughs> i i wanted to cut in here to say so uh, you're making me appreciate superman in a way that i i haven't looked at him before uh so thank you for that um, then my job here is done <laughs> 
I, I'm on a mini journey within my Batman journey of appreciating Clark Kent more. Right. And because, I'm slowly getting there. Because TJ uh, on the show said Superman was boring and I've never seen the fans of our podcast come after yeah. him so hard. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and to be fair, I was soaking it on. I was like, get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting there. But also, yeah. Chris, to bounce off of what you were saying about the queer subtext of this, I, yeah. again, coming back to my Marvel, you know, with X-Men and there's a, when you're hitting puberty and getting powers, I think that's in play here a little bit with yeah. John developing his powers and, you know, we're seeing that happen with his flying and stuff like that. Yeah. But also, you know, hiding it, the journey you mentioned, Chris, with his parents realizing oh, you know, we need to handle this differently um, for his, you know, well-being, basically. And, but we also have to look at his interaction with Damien because, this, you know, as much as this is implied to be a brotherly relationship from characters in this book, like, there's going to be people that are shipping these two characters together. Yeah, I think that it's actually a very big one. And to be clear, like, when most of us are talking about shipping them we're talking about when they grow up like yes. many, yeah, many a right. year like john long, is 10 right. long time pat like right. maybe this 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 dynamic stays for a long time and then sometimes in their teen years they're like oh that's what we're talking about we're talking about shipping you know davian right. and john and there are adult versions of them in different comics um that are much e- much more easily shippable let's be clear because they, they were are, they yeah. were a tad bit older in that deceased book i mentioned right there's another is it, it's not deceased there's one where they're actually adults and they've taken over the roles of batman it's the, and it's I thought that was deceased. It's sequel it's, it's the, the sequel. sequel oh the sequel yeah. okay and so yeah i think that's what people are talking about this so i want to be clear because they are they are babies in this right but um but i do think it's that i think it's it's a fair read of those characters and usually is it's one of the most interesting things about the bat family super family dynamic is it there's like a super family pair for each one of the bat family members pretty much <laughs> right. Um. right i find that really fascinating because you know yeah. you're coming it from uh what means most to you and the idea that jonathan you know the writing of it could be interpreted as right so this is what you'd want a family to support a queer kid so right we're going to be happy for you to come out but there's a safe space here and we're always going to back you up right so i right because now now you've talked about it for me that becomes really clear but because i was looking at it from a political point of view for me it was the right you know we do not want your power to go to your head because as a 10 year old, you don't know how Mm. to handle it. Yeah. And so I've taken it from a, you know, from another direction that, you know, Jonathan is ultimately going to inherit, you know, the Superman mantle. And I think in the new series that's come out, what's it called? Future Slate. Future State. Sorry, Future State. He has. And so, you know, Clark, because of the upbringing that he had at the Kent farm has a really, really well balanced view of life. Right. Yeah. And he wants to make sure that Jonathan has the same because, you know, otherwise he could end up, he could become Homelander so yeah. very easily. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think both of your readings are, you know, they can both coexist at the same time. I oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Too. I, yeah, I think that it's, it's such a really good point that you, you know, if we're going to just overread the story, which I think is fun, first of all, um, I think that idea of looking at it as, you know, John has this sort of privilege that comes with power and learning to navigate power dynamics is so hard for children and then Damien has it when it comes to intelligence and and wealth which comes up a few times in this one right (laughs) he throws his wealth around a lot in the story (laughs) in in little in kid ways that were really funny like loaning him six dollars all right oh I just broke my motorcycle let me call up another then John has a decency to give him the, his change back, which I thought was so Jonathan. Aww, it is so Jonathan. I loved it. I also love Davian coming and being like, I wanted to see how they live across the tracks or something. And I was like, I don't think that they're poor, Damian. <laughs> yeah, but uh, compared to uh, Damien, everybody is. It's fair. Damien has all of the wealth. So he's just like, oh, I wanted to see how poor people go to school. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, like back to the shipping, like people were going to ship this no matter what. Yeah. Combined with the queer subtext, I think is what really brings it home. Yeah. For that. Um, but I, ha- I have in my notes like, yeah, like I, c- I could ship this. Like they're a little young yeah, right yeah. now, but like when they're older, John's a little bit more muscly and we have still short Damien. Like <laughs> that could be a really cute it thing. It would be cute. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> a future ship. It's a it's a future OTP, I yeah. think. Like that, we'll call it that. Future state. Come on, give it to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Were either of you keeping count of how many... <laughs> Damien did. No. no, I feel like if you played a drinking game, every time he goes, you would just yeah. not, you would be dead. Uh, I do have a count. I'll let you, you know do? at the end of the pod. <laughs> oh, okay, that's exciting. I love it so much. I was trying to put it in as our intro, and then I realized like that it it's too unclear without it being written out. Yeah, but I, I have to say, appreciate me because I've gone from not knowing what that was to counting them when reading a book. <laughs> That's true. You did it. I had to teach. I had to teach TJ about the t- sound. <laughs> uh, can we talk about the cussing? Because I felt like this was a middle grade, but then we have Damien like saying hell all the time. <laughs> it, it pulled me out every time, but like not oh, in the bad right. way. Yeah. I for and honestly, then, it's so you have Damien Jonathan correcting himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cute. Uh, yeah. I think that works character wise. You're right. It's it's strange in this kind of age. I guess, but it's so Damien to just be like, I'm an adult, I can curse, but it's still not one of the bad ones, let's be clear. Oh, yeah. 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 He knows that character. Alfred would have words with him if he said something you know. worse. <laughs> Alfred would have said, right, you know, it's vulgar and beneath you, Master Damien. <laughs> And who would have appealed to Damien's ego on That's, that? That was so perfectly Alfred. I, oh. <laughs> I know. We, we've had many guests do impressions, and you can be our Alfred. <laughs> that was perfect. I'm honored. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> Damien riding on John's back, even though he was like, oh, I'll never God, be hysterical. I, it was so <laughs> funny. Oh. And he's like working with the invention on his back. I love that. I, yeah, I because- love that. Because uh, uh, Jonathan mentions that much earlier, doesn't he? And you yes. know, Damon replies, "There's absolutely no way that's ever going to happen." And literally, you know, within the first couple of, you know, so that was just. And actually, that's, that's so something funny. else I really want to talk about is that I felt the pacing and the yes. order of events because you know they flash forward, they flash back. You don't, and you've just got all the excitement and the anticipation. Yes, which, and. If you look at, right, because I've got them here in front of me, and when you look at uh, Super Stunts 1, page 1, and it's just a domestic scene, you've not got the heroes in there at all. It's just, you know, a family sitting around. I just thought that was, from a writing point of view, I thought that was a really bold yeah. opening because you you think, so, well, hold on. Where, where the couch? <laughs> the big ass, yeah. And then you get into page three and you've got, and this is where Jorge's art, I just thought you've just got speed coming off every single panel. Yeah, it's I just so thought, dynamic. Absolutely. It's one of the things when you realize, yeah, that's why they've got capes because it just looks so bloody cool when yeah, they're like racing this along. Is- this is the best Damien costume. I mean, I know this is sort of the one he always has, but it has so much more detail, I feel like, in Super Sons. And I love it. I love Damien's costume. I think he has the best Robin costume overall. So on top of my Glee comparison, I also have <laughs> to say Damien and John remind me a little bit of Falcon and the Winter Soldier from the films. <gasps> oh my gosh, ba- baby Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> Yeah, how they're just like, I hate you. I now have a new answer for the first question. I want I want the Winter Soldier and Falcon as children. <laughs> That's really, yeah, they have a, I would say they have a less antagonistic relationship than that. Because I feel like it's so clear how much they really like each other in this. Despite, you know, of course, even moments of being like, no, I hate you. No, but it's so obvious. As soon as one of them needs something, they run to the other one and then have to try to pretend like they didn't do it because they care yeah. about each other. Exactly. And the thing is, because it's that, you know, we're taking the next generation of the Batman Superman yeah. skill set and powers, aren't we? And yeah. seeing how that would have 
developed if they'd grown up together rather than appeared right. at the you know at the height of their powers as it were can, yeah can we talk about there's a moment in it when batman superman and the kids are discussing the whole or Al, alfred brings it up alfred's like you know your father's uh didn't used to get along he almost is like i, I could see him referencing batman v superman for yeah. a minute there. and he's like they didn't get along <laughs> so well and then there's there's this kind of discussion about it and they are sitting there eating food they're like munching on food and um superman goes what would happen if we fight and batman's just like i would win and superman yeah, says i can fly and i've got super strength i'd still win yeah he doesn't even defend it he's just like come on i haven't watched any of the dc animated films because they apparently are meant to be really really good and so yeah. it was like there's justice league dark where it's constantine it's swamp thing it's all the magical characters and it's batman and i thought yeah. really? really and so <laughs> that's why i i was uh yeah thinking about that with batman being put in with the super powered characters when i was reading through amazo's wikipedia today it was like and he takes the power of batman and i was like what wealth like what does amazo get from batman <laughs> Or Damien's doing a lot of flips. That was, yeah, I, yeah. that was okay. That was hilarious. So that that yeah, I think that was what I was going toward uh, earlier. Was there when they have these moments where John and Damien are comparing to each other, and then they they keep relating it back to their dads, which cracks me up. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that scene where he, John's like, oh right, you're a superpower to flip, and Damien's like, at least I use my powers, John. <laughs> Right. My dad could beat up your dad. It really is. And then, yeah. they, then they're uh, actually was... in the scene together and Batman and Superman are like, but why would we? <laughs> it's so cute. And what would you guys rate this book? One out of five Batarangs. Oh, six Batarangs. <laughs> I know. I, I, because I... there will always be that Batarang you weren't expecting. <laughs> I agree. I, I I am sitting over here going five is not enough. <laughs> this is one of my favorite bat titles ever. I love it so much. And it made me it made me joyful. I've been like giddy ready to talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's and it I must admit, yesterday evening, no, sort of afternoon, I was feeling a little bit low about things. Yeah. And I thought, right, I've got, you know, the podcast coming up tomorrow. So I got out all of my super sons, spread them out, picked up the first five. And I thought, yeah, I bloody hell, I feel so much better. <laughs> it was amazing. And I think part of it is also that there's this, you know, we talk about triggers in a negative way, but there's also this, you know, my the best parts of my childhood were often say, right, going to the comic shop, yeah. coming back with you know four or five comics having like that bar of chocolate that glass of milk and just sort of sitting on my bed just going through them and that's really what part of you know and actually it's funny because that's part of the writing as well there's because I write fantasy and I also write mid-grade there's a part of me that's always chasing that feeling or yeah. pure joy one had as a kid where you weren't being cynical you weren't like trying to think oh you know this isn't good enough or you know why does not like beat his brains out or something like that just thinking no yeah. this is just really really great great fun and just mood lifting that's really the yes. best way of putting it 100 percent. tj how do you rate it um you know my first instinct is to give it a four because i really enjoyed it um i didn't like it's not a favorite of mine. I feel like if I needed a little bit more of the plot aspect to, to really give it like a five for me. But uh, like a four is really good though. Like I, I really enjoyed he's, it. He's defending himself and we haven't said anything. <laughs> I know, I know. He's just like, like, no, don't TJ, come for me. TJ, we will still love you no matter <laughs> what rating you give it. I'm defending like, <laughs> it to myself because I'm listening to your you both. I was like, should I give it like four and a half? And I'm like... <laughs> Well, like the character stuff was just so good yeah. but to get that five from me i think i would need the plot to be just as good tj yeah. like well, superman and lois lane we love you exactly as you are yeah there you go because it's funny because yesterday i thought all right i'll just go you know i thought i'd go visit goodreads to see what other people have been saying about super sons and it was really interesting those that gave it the five i think well i'm just here for the banter yeah, yeah. and right. those that marked it lower were basically saying well you know the plot and the uh, the villain isn't that much and so right. it was so it's so tj the that four is completely understandable it's yeah. really what one 
Okay. And what what one's priorities are really? Uh, yeah. You're gonna make me shed a tear. <laughs> <laughs> you are. This is a safe space, TJ. You're okay. <laughs> So, yeah, but you know, after I read it the first time, I was like, you know what? That was fun, but I'm done. This time around, I was like, okay, when can I read the second volume? Yay! Yay. Uh, That's what we want. That and is now, what we want. are you ready to know the t count? Yes. How many t were there? Do you have guesses? <laughs> can we take bets? 25. No, that was too many. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was half of that number, though. It was five. That's not half of 25. What do you- Well, you know, if you split two and five and a half. <laughs> it's like, what, TJ, wait. That's I can fifth. do math. I can do math. I swear. I mean, you can't if you think that's a half. A half is 12.5. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying, though? If you separate the Sorry, because we we were discussing this before the podcast, the fact that I did spend 20 years as an engineer and I have a degree uh, in engineering. You do not call half of 25, you know, you do not say five is half of 25. The building would fall down, TJ. If you take half of that would be upset clients. Number. <laughs> I'm an English person, can you tell? Uh -huh, you're, you're it's English a fifth. Major. Leave it at that. Amazing. I, I My brain broke for a second. <laughs> I do. I understand what you've said, but it took me so long to recover. <laughs> Whatever. Just roast me. We went from accepting me. To <laughs> we accept your opinion. We're roasting your math skills, yeah, however. That's fair. Uh, so five. T As Damien would say. T <laughs> yeah, t to that math. Chris, would you like to ask our question? Yes. So this is the question we ask of every guest. And it mm. is, if you had the opportunity to write a, any Batman-related story, no no limitations, what would you write? All right. Well, I've already mentioned it. I would mention, I would love to, oh my gosh. Right. So if anyone from like the DC hierarchies out there, Talia and Damien yes. and something connected with the Arabian Nights. I think that would be amazing. Oh, I want that so much. I would yeah, read that, that. That would be my, you know, it could be like a thousand and one Gotham Nights. Yeah. I love now, it. Now that you've both said, well, she could be a good mother. I'm like, all right, let me see it. Show me the, <laughs> show me the proof. <laughs> I, I will send you the receipts. I have them. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. And Sarwat, before we uh, ask you one last question, uh, I have another question for you. This is <laughs> oh, purely for, for my own self-interest. Can you please, with your amazing accent, say, <laughs> please step out of the dinosaur's buttocks? <laughs> Master Kent, please step out of the dinosaur's buttocks. Yes. Oh, that was so good. That was such a good impression. That was so funny that his little red cape dangled out of the back. That was like the best line in the whole book. And I was like, we cannot leave this episode. I know. And he, he leads into it with, I can't believe my life has brought me here. But I. Hold on. What? Which? Right. Is that. Is that issue five? Ooh, I believe it when, was the last issue. Yeah, so issue five when uh, Jonathan goes, right, hold on, look, oh, we've got to do this properly, all right? Okay, so yes, please. I'm going to... Hmm. I cannot believe my life has come to a place where I have to say this. Please step out of the dinosaur's buttocks. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that was so good! <laughs> Not only did I get it once from you, I got it twice <laughs> with the oh, performance. My pleasure. Oh, that was good. Bravo. Was really good. I'll clap. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. All uh -huh. right. And my final question for you, Sarwat, where can our listeners find you on social media? And do you have any projects that just came out or coming Ooh, out? It's funny you should mention that. Right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Twitter, Sarwat Chadda, S-A-R-W-A-T. Chadda, C H A double D A, sticker.com. That's my website. I'm also on Instagram, which is Sarwat underscore Chadda. And if you visit either of those, I will be talking about City of the Play God, which is my mid grade that's come out with Rick Wyden Presents. And for any of you who, well, Rick knows, needs no introduction, but for <laughs> the last few years, he's been giving 
author's opportunity to write about really um, non-European based mythology and I was really 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 honoured to be asked to join the crew and I really want to do Rick Riordan Presents first Muslim protagonist and so yes. City of the Play God features sick 13 years old and yeah born and brought up in New York and living there when the ancient play god Nurgle turns up and dis spreads his plagues throughout the city and beyond because I thought it'd be really interesting to write about how society would react if a mysterious disease came out of nowhere huh. and bearing in mind I wrote this in <laughs> 2018 <laughs> it I was either the worst marketing play of all time or the best or so, you're you're a one. psychic and you don't know well, it <laughs> i hope so because the next book i'm going to write is about how a middle-aged author becomes a billionaire and starts living <laughs> on a yacht <laughs> has a few tropical islands <laughs> of his own so yeah let's hope that is the case and in case i didn't say it enough at the beginning city of the play god is amazing i grew up loving oh, percy you. jackson and you know this is it's so perfectly both in the tone of those stories and your own perspective and that that it's beautiful. I love it so much. It made me cry. I really want a second one. Oh. Second oh, one? Well, I hope so. Really, that depends on all of you guys. Um, if sales are good, there will be sequel. But it's so funny because, of course, now that I think about it, there's two main, there's two teen characters. There's Bellet, yes. who's the badass warrior girl, and there's Sick, who's basically is, who works at his parents' deli. And I suddenly realized, oh my god, I think there's a Jonathan and Damien vibe happening between oh, them. Yes, there <laughs> is! Their, their banter is <laughs> very so good. obvious now, because <laughs> Sick is like so down to earth, and he's all about family, and he's got no yeah. you know, he's got no combat abilities. Well, Bellet is basically, oh my god, Bellet is like Damien's long lost sister. She really is. Yeah, so if you love super sons pick up city of the play god let's get those cells up people i want a sequel let's do Fantastic. it i cannot wait to read it and i have your short story in a certain point of view the star wars book on hold so i'm gonna read that very soon as well it's funny because the star wars thing was i thought right i'm it's written from the point of view of, view of an engineer and i just <laughs> thought i had so much fun writing that thank you so much this has been an absolute blast uh, it, I cannot believe we've been at this for almost almost two hours. It's been so much fun. The time just absolutely. absolutely flown by. Chris, TJ, honestly, it's been brilliant, brilliant fun. Thank you so much for inviting me along. Our outsider this week is at Demon's Daughter on Twitter. We want to send a huge thank you to them. As we were editing this episode, we sent out a tweet asking for evidence that Talia is a good mother, something I maintain to be true. And this Twitter user and listener sent us so many panels of comics. We will retweet them uh, at the day the episode comes out so you can see them all. But there is tons of evidence. And I just want to say I was right. And this user <laughs> helped us get there. <laughs> As you can see, I was uneducated about Talia and uh, the history of her writing. So thank you so much for educating and schooling me. Uh, that was very interesting, Fred. And just thank you in general for being so active with our podcast and on our Discord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And hashtag stop the Talia hate. Talia deserves better. Talia deserves better. Join us next time when we will be talking to Jadzia Axelrod, author of the upcoming Galaxy, The Prettiest Star, about what book, TJ? Batwoman Elegy by Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams III. And I am so excited to talk to Jadzia. I am so excited to talk about this book as well. I love Greg Rucka's writing and I am excited to talk about some cult stuff. Oh, and Batwoman, I love a good lesbian. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Gotham Outsiders. You can find me, Chris, on Twitter at The Myth of Psyche, where I talk about feminism, queerness, and frequently Batman. And you can find my co-host, TJ. At Troyfin2 on Twitter, where I talk about all things book-related and occasionally Batman-related, although a little bit more frequently nowadays. And you can find Gotham Outsiders on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at Gotham Outsiders, where we talk about Batman all the time. So join us next time. Same bat time, same bat place.